after you got all the music and stuff like that? Was there ever, mm. did you and Squin, do you have to practice to, you know, have this kind of thing never. going on or? Yeah, Squin, you never practice ever in the history that we've been on the show. Never practice. Squinji, Squinji was so talented that most of the times when we have a class, say for example, we have a class weekend, Saturday coming, right? Yeah. In in, in New York, wherever. And I am I, I would have been in the studio from last week or even the weeks before, but I would be finished it up probably today, right? Which is Thursday. And when I finish up and 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 basically cut them on dubs and everything, have all the dubs prepared. Then I, what I do is I have everything on a CD or two CDs. And, you know, them time they were talking about days where you have Walkman now. You get what I'm saying? So you find, say, you know, yeah. we, we're going on the flight. He has his Walkman. I give him the two CDs and he listens them all the way on the flight up. You know, he listens them through the night, you know, you know, and during the day, during the day tomorrow, he listens them. And come Saturday, he knows everything and we're ready to go. That's just it. DJ Mark talk about playing the Great Bass Odyssey. He revealed that he was the first selector to ever play Bass Odyssey. He spoke about playing Easy Rock and then I meet up with Keith. He also spoke about the relationship we ended up with Squinji. He talked about Tinawan. He said, him play the sound, then Tinawan because Tinawan established the sound. He also talked about the talent of Squinji and how they never ever practice and how them used to approach one sound class. DJ Mark also talk about the image of the sound and say theme sound based Odyssey created an image of playing new music, new style. And him also talk about links and Mataran and the bodyguard clash and how Mataran and Babyface did fight. But the dance at Jersey with them and bodyguard was squingy mash up the place bless up bless up welcome back to entourage records you are new via here please consider subscribing turn on your post notification bell so whenever i make a new upload you can be the first to be notified yo yo one of these here dance hall link and terage records one of the talk i turn in dance hall link and terage records your entourage the meat you know it from man your ruggedness There he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, I hope this internet will Mark, work with the flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. Man, We're, just work We're just there. You go. Boy, good to see you. Good to see you. Listen, see I I just yeah, want to say thank you, thank you for be, being on. Um, thank you for being on the platform. I appreciate that. Trust me. Um, you know. Let me just tell you something, man. It's been a crazy week, a crazy day. But, you know, it, it's all good that you're here now. Mark, formerly of yeah, Bass Odyssey, definitely. you have your own sound called Mark Movement now? Yeah, definitely. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to just get right in there because I think, if anything, you're one of the most dominant selectors that the business has ever seen and for the years that you've done your work and put in and for the dances and the clashes that you have brought all of us enjoyment i for myself want to say thank you for everything that you've done and i appreciate it really from the bottom of my heart it was um it's amazing to see i know you're not finished but for the era that you know we we, we discuss and we talk about thank you for what you've done for the business you know what i mean yeah, man, for real, man. Respect for that. You know what I mean? It's good to know that, you know, all the work that I put in over the years, you know, that it's, it's appreciated, you know? So I, I'm humbled by that. Yeah. So, you know, big respect for that. Yeah. Um, listen, let, let's, let's, just, let's just kick off where it started. Where did Mark come from? And because we want to get to how did Mark reach to Base Odyssey? And who was there before you? That's very important to the world that's been listening. <laughs> All right. Well, well, you know, I'm from St. Dan, you know, country boy. You know what I mean? From ever since. Yeah. So, 
started in got involved in music from high school you know but not records by actually playing instruments because i can play bass guitar keyboard drums you know so in high school we 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 even had a band there and everything so that's that's where my passion for music started you know what i mean after i left high school i used i was working at a place in kingston and um they normally have like a friday evening social you know after work jam or everything and a little sound system would have been there you know and i i was basically fascinated by the actual mixing of records and everything so you know i had a little belt drive turntable that i started to practice with you know what i mean to try yes. to mix and you know get things you know get my thing going that way so once i mastered mixing on a belt drive which all who know about belt drive is one of the hardest things to do you know you know it was basically smooth yeah. sailing from that because you know when you go, you go to the techniques direct drive turntable it is like one two you know so yeah yeah basically that was it you know after that um I hooked up with a with a sound system from Sentence Bay in Sentence by the name of Easy Rock. You know what I mean? And I, you know, we started playing parties all over the north coast and everything there. And it was actually at a party that I was playing Easy Rock for a for a bank. It was a staff party I was playing. That's where I met Keith and he was telling me that he was building the sound based Odyssey. Oh, okay. Mm. So Keith was building Bass Odyssey. You met him. This is 1989. So, 19... 89. 1989. Yeah. So then, mm -hmm. what happened then? So he was building. He, you he, said he, he you're me. coming on board or? He asked me. He asked me if I would have been interested to play the sound, you know, because he didn't have any selectors yet, and um, you know they were basically building the sound. The sound in the process of being built, you know. So I told him, so yeah, man, if anything, I will come and and check him, because uh, you know I actually live in Brownstone, lived in Brownstone at the time, you know. So you know, going up to Alexander, just eight miles up the road. So um, one day I went up there, you know, to to to, to link up with them and everything. And he was showing me what he had and, you know, all the equipment that he had and all those things. So they had the turntables set up and everything with a mixer. So, you know, they, 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 I took some records and started mixing. And it actually draw a crowd because, you know, not the early days, you know, they never really used to mixing, you know. People just play music and move from one record to the other. You know what I mean? But... To see somebody mixing and you know the songs are flowing and everything, they actually took out a tape deck and started making making a cassette. Yeah, I mean while I was mixing, so you know, um, yeah, that was it. You know, and and he asked me if I wanted to come on board, and I said no problem. Yeah, I mean, so to make it clear, you know, I was actually the very first person to play bass. Artist. That holy crap! Holy crap! Finally. So here it is. This is it. This is the historical moment that we have to listen to. I, I'm not saying nothing, but so you were officially the first selector for Bass Odyssey. Very first selector. They can bun me out all they want now. Oh no, I see people <laughs> on here who are laughing at me in there. Don't worry, they could bun me out. But don't worry about it. We finally have <laughs> history. History. Yeah. I've seen people saying, yeah. I told you, they were just, ah, uh, okay, all right, let me calm down. Because I didn't know. I didn't know at the time. So, oh. after you, what happened next? Well, what happened is that um, I played, to be honest, I played bass Odyssey probably for probably about seven to eight months. Now, the thing is, my, I was in the process of getting um, documents sorted out to go live in the States, right? So I played bass Odyssey at a couple of dances, Spanish Town, you know, in Santa and all over. But the thing is, Tina One came and saw me on the sound. And it's, it's when I was at the, 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 the verge of um, getting through to go to the States 
you know, at, at that time, they never really I think about selecting as a career, so to speak. You know what I mean? So once the opportunity came around to, for me to go to the States, of course, I, I, I jumped at that because, you know, you want to see if you can better yourself otherwise. You know what I mean? So okay. in, all, in all fairness, you know, the, 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 the name base, obviously, getting out there for people to know it was uh, or is accredited to Tinawa. He's the one that actually put the sound out, you know, or established the name base, obviously, out there. I played it to start off, but in terms of recognition, Tinawa is the one that put it out there. Wow. Wow. This is history. Wow. Okay. So Tina One, then after Tina One, were you still in tune with the sound? You still knew what was going on, what was happening? Um, I, 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 I basically kept track of the sound. I know them days it was cassette days. So I basically kept yeah. track of the sound via listening cassettes and all them things. Um, but I wasn't directly in contact with them. You know, because I was doing my thing in, in, in Florida and everything. Not to do, not, nothing to do with music or anything of the sort. You know what I mean? Just working, you know, trying to yeah. earn a dollar. So, <clears throat> so um, you know, I wasn't really in direct contact with it. But it was, it was a case where, you now the sound was, you know, established so much to the point where they started traveling. I remember going to a couple dances that Tina One came into Florida. I remember going to a couple of base dances there. But just as a spectator, yeah. then, so to speak, you know. But um, Keith knew where I was, and there was a situation where um, I think it was ninety, late ninety three, ninety four, or something like that. Um, he had a problem in terms of there was no the selectors. He had some tours to do, some dances to do in in, in couple states, and none of the selectors' visas were available, so he had nobody to play the song. So he contacted me and said, boy, he's in you know, a situation where he's asking me to go and play dances because you know, they don't have the commitment to the promoters already. So he's asking if I can be with the dance. And I said, yeah, man, no problem. So you know, they, 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 they came, he came up you know, and got the dubs to me. And I'm basically listening to the dubs based off of what I hear at cassettes because I didn't, know the, so I didn't know the dubs like that. I didn't even know how the dubs were situated or anything, organized or anything. You know, and yeah. I had to basically do what you call a crash program just to get used <laughs> to the dub, try to memorize them on which plate and everything as fast as possible. You know, and we played a couple of dances. That's why I can be, I can say, I can, I am one of the selectors that can say I played in Biltmore Ballroom in New York because one of the dances that I played was in Biltmore Ballroom in Earth Ruler. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, that was the very first dance I played. <laughs> and it was in it was a clash in Biltmore Ballroom with Earth Ruler, you know what I mean? So, so who was the MC? <laughs> you were the selector. Who was the MC? It was Tina One. It was between ah. me and Keith. No, Tina One was around at the time. Okay. It was between me and Keith. Okay. So we we you know I, I I started off talking and then started mixing and then Keith would would have the mic and do his thing and you know we just did we just basically were there representing. You know what I mean? Because the commitment was already there, you know, based off of the bookings with the promoter. Wow. And then, you know, after that dance, you now it, it, we had several other dances, you know, all over the States. And, um, you know, we went and did it because, you know, the juggling dances were, were based on this. It was just like the guest sound. Then I played the sound by myself, you know, mix and talk and deal with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there was two clashes. I, I, I can remember two clashes with 4x4 four four Exodus. Right, and then yeah. Tina One came up to join me. Then, so it was me and Tina One that played the clashes, and we beat four by four Exodus to a frazzle. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> it was kind of time. <laughs> okay, okay. So mm. now the sound is now traveling. The sound is getting famous now because of Tina One and yeah. um yourself now are picking up a, a pace within well, the, the... the the sound the sound was traveling not because of my contribution it was tina one and then glamour g and uh, and even lenny yes and okay. also 
But it's just that I, I basically just, I was what you could call a substitute selector based on the fact that, you know, they had commitments and no visa was available for, the, for them to fly. Okay. So I, I, I basically filled in just to cover those days. But the song was already, you know, playing all over the, all over the states. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. so then it was, so it's Mark, Tina One, Glamour G, then Lenny. Glamour G, Lenny, Quinji and Lenny. But the thing is, as I said, I was just filling in. So I was not back on the sound at that time. Okay, yes, okay. And I, 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 I basically mm -hmm. was just filling in for the situation, to help the situation. Okay. So when mm -hmm. the sound, uh, were you at the point, and if you don't want to wish to discuss it, that is fine. I don't have a problem. But there was a time when the sound split. Yeah. Right. And when, when, the, when the sound split, I was in contact with both Keith and Bonnie. You know what I mean? Because I said they, they had dances. And um, I remember distinctly that they, they had, um, I think it was Bonnie who had called me, you know, about some dances that they, he had to deal with. You know, uh, he wanted me to go and deal with it. And it's like, I, I kind of found it strange because normally it would have been Keith calling me, right? So because of the whole situation and upon hearing a kind of vibe that is going on that, you know, something is not right, I elected not to go and play the song at any other because I didn't want to be taking sides or anything of the sort. Yes, and I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't sure, you know, how to the seriousness of what was going on. So... I, I just elected to say, you know, just I, I wouldn't be playing the song or playing the dances for it, for him. Okay. So, you know, it's after I came back to Jamaica you now, I realized that, um, you know, it was really that serious that it actually caused, you know, the split between the both of them. Okay. So, is this where the squingy Mark era had to start? Uh, would you consider well, this the era? Well, well, when the sound, what happened is that when I came back to Jamaica, I, um, there was this nightclub in Brownstone by the name of Trey's Nightclub that um, we, we were, I, I, was a, I was a disc jockey for the club, basically. So, you know, we, we, we had all kind of parties and that I, that I would be the one that's playing, me alone, right? And I started an event by the name of Teen Jam at the club which was kept on Saturdays between the hours of 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Because, you know, we, we, we made sure that the club was dark and everything. Even though it was daylight, we made sure that the club was dark and everything. So it would kind of have a nightclub vibe in the day. So um, we started this thing something and it took off. It was very big. Every Saturday, the place was blocked. So what happened now is that Squingy started to come down to the club on the Saturdays. Job was going on, and, and you know, this time it's not a case where I do springy personally like that. But me and him just clicked that way, they were in the sense that he came and he said, Yo, just give me the mic. And you know, I was mixing and he was talking. So every Saturday, it would be me and Springy playing the teen jam in the club because, because if the teen jam finished by seven, you know, he would leave and then go to his dance or whatever, you know. What I mean, and then it, yeah. you know, that is, that is actually where me and Springy developed. A chemistry, so I started to develop a chemistry. Okay, so, so it's inside yeah. the club that you guys, yeah, yeah, it was in the club. So, I uh, know that, um, the the you know, based of the whole state, it's like Squinji had to be doing what you call overtime work. Because he had the, the song had bookings in Jamaica, it was it was key, it was key to the main selector, uh, and um, of course oh, the tours yeah. that they had. Mark, do, that, do you want to appreciate of of you taking the time and the effort, man? I'm appreciative of that. Um, so yeah, yeah so Squingy, you said Squingy, and you were connecting more from in the Teen Jam before even the whole <laughs> Base Odyssey movement. Correct? No, it wasn't even a good because even even during that time, it's not like I had an intention 
or was seeking to go back on the sound. It's like, you know, I was just doing, doing the team jam and me and him just working. But what happened is that it was getting out there to say, boy, you know, we work good as a team. You know what I mean? And because um, he was the only, he was the main selector on the sound and he had to be traveling. And there was nobody else, or I wouldn't say nobody else, but it, they, they needed more people. Yeah, so you need a lot of selector and everything. So that's how um, Keith asked me if I want to come back on the sound. Okay. And mm. your connection... So this is, well, this, is like, this is like late 96 we're talking about. Okay, all right. Okay. So now the sound is... I believe it, it's, it's split and we've moved on from that and... Now you and Squinji are there. Was Tinawan still there controlling the sound or was it now no, Tinawan, just you yeah. and it was it was when I went on there, it was um me, Squinji, Skinny, Worm, Duane. That was a group. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. now explain to me how this one rock as it's been called became mm -hmm. such a powerhouse of the whole dance hall industry this one man you see what i'm saying that you were like he was so confident in you with whatever you put on the turntable it didn't bother him you guys elevated to clashes upon clashes where was the do you remember the first one do you remember how it all started like to say we're going to run over everything a lot. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, I can't even say which clash was the first clash, uh, to be honest, because it's been so long. But what happened is that um, I was always musically inclined, right? So I brought my style of playing to bass Odyssey, right? And, 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 and Squingy, because we were playing at the Teen Jam, you know, he, he he knew my style of play, basically. So so um I brought my style of playing and then got involved with the dub cutting and everything. So we started to create things. And what happened, you know, is that one of the things that um we 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 basically um brought to the table in terms of clashing and and, and, and the sound system business is that you know we decided that it's all gonna be about new music. You understand? It was all going to be about new music. I mean, they're, 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 those times, it's like based on this. When you talk about new music, we had every single new dub. You understand? So we decided that this is what we're going to be bringing to the clashes. Yeah, and it took off because when, when we start doing it now, it's like it started to create a different vibe because, you know, it, the, the, the older clashes sounds will be coming with them long time songs and long time dubs and all them things there. And we were just coming with new dubs and new dubs. Sometimes some of the dubs we were playing, some people don't even know them because they are so new. But the fact that it's a dub and it's new, you know what I mean? And of course, it's a, it's a great squinchy that is, is, is introducing it. It's going to be effective. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That, that, that was what we used and created that image for Bass Odyssey to say, all right, this song we talk about new music, a Bass Odyssey you talk about. Okay. So the, the whole thing was that, did, did you put that, you know, that catalog together to say, I'm going to voice like this, the rhythms and everything. Was that you? That Was that you and Mark? You and, um, yeah. you and Squingy? You and Keep? How was that? Basically, basically, it was me. The, 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 the different rhythms, all the rhythms that are being used. This is something that I sit and research within at my home and and you know listen to songs and even try to dj the, the 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 song that i would want on the rhythm to make sure that it would fit on the rhythm properly you know what i mean and after i realized that it can fit yeah. on the rhythm then i go to pen to paper and start to change up the lyrics because we used to bring the lyrics to the artist then we wouldn't just take exactly what the artist is giving everybody we brought our own lyrics and say oh the way i want it do you know you understand so, you know, we, right. we're, I was always researching rhythms and rhythms, try to, you know, just to bring something fresh to the business. Damn. It was, was there ever, like, after you got all the music and stuff like that, was there ever, oh. did you and Squingy have to practice 
to, you know, have this kind of thing never. going on or? Yes, Gunji never practiced ever in the history that we've been on the show. Never practiced. Squinji, Squinji was so talented that most of the times when we have a class, say for example, we have a class weekend, Saturday coming, right? Yeah. In in, in New York, wherever. And I am I, I would have been in the studio from last week or even the weeks before, but I would be finished it up probably today, right? Which is Thursday. And when I finish up and 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 basically cut them on dubs and everything, have all the dubs prepared. Then I, what I do is I have everything on a CD or two CDs. And, you know, them time they were talking about days where you have Walkman now. You get what I'm saying? So you find, say, you know, yeah. we, we're going on the flight. He has his Walkman. I give him the two CDs and he listens them all the way on the flight up. You know, he listens them through the night, you know, you know, and during the day, during the day tomorrow, he listens them. And come Saturday, he knows everything and we're ready to go. That's just it. Wow. So Squinty just basically hears them as he goes on the flight, and we're ready. You're ready. Yep, yep. ready. But it's Man. Squinty, you know, the difference is Squinty in comparison to a lot of MCs. Squinty has what you call crowd control. Squinty does not have to make an intro pertaining to the song that is being played. He makes an intro with whatever comes to his mind, whatever he sees going on in the dance. Whatever is said by an ex selector or played by an ex song, he makes his intro based off of that. It doesn't have necessarily have to be with, um, to do with the dub that is being played. But because he has tremendous crowd control, once he does and makes his speech, whatever comes is going to connect. Because just, that was just his natural talent. Doggone, man. Yeah. That, you know, I'm just. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm reliving some of the bass Odyssey cassettes from the clashes that I hear. you see seen in the UK, uh, in Jamaica, and, and some. And, you know, I, does, is there anyone that just stands out to you that Squingy just showed you? Like, I, I know he's one of the greatest. I know that. Mm -hmm. But is there any dance that stand out to you, Mark, sitting from behind to look and say, Jano? I'm a part of the, one of the greatest eras of and greatest sound systems ever. Is there yeah. one that? Is there one that? Um, it, it, it's actually two, and the two of them, he he showed um, exactly his level of talent, his level of skill, his level level of crowd control, and wits. You know, in that dance, and that dance was the the, the bodyguard. Bass Odyssey in New Jersey. Now, the thing about this dance, there was a real big hype on this dance because it was like a couple months before Bodyguard and Addis had clashed and, you know, Matarana and Babyface fight, you know, links, links really dominated and everything. So Matarana and Babyface end up fighting and it's like, it's like it had basically dismantled Addis. Yeah, and so bodyguard was the sound to beat now because them come a New York come 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 kill New York King. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So, so um, this dance was so important that when the promoter wanted to keep it and approach bodyguard, they said they didn't want they were they were they were not going to take the clash in New York because them didn't want you know they wanted to enjoy their glory then so to speak. So they never wanted to take the clash in New York. But they decided to take the clash in New Jersey, which is across the bridge. It's like, it, 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 it was so funny to say, boy, you don't want to take it in New York, but it's just across the bridge to New Jersey. All right, no problem. So they took the clash, right? Yeah. This clash was so serious that because back in those days, you didn't have MCs, you didn't have hosts, you know what I mean? You didn't flip a coin to see who play first. How it, what was determined, how that was determined is whoever reached the dance first, whichever song reached the dance first, that's the song that's going to play first. Wow. Right? And this dance, this dance was so serious that, or we took it so serious, and I know that they took it, Bodyguard took it serious too, that we left and reached in the venue 9 o'clock the night. And that time the sound system was just being, was stringing up. And we helped yeah. Snow White Sound. It was Snow White Sound. And we helped them put up the boxes. 
and string it up because we wanted everybody to see that we were the first sound there. Yeah, you understand? Okay. And, and yes. like, say, for example, we reached 9 o'clock. Bodyguard reached yeah. 9 30. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's like it, both of us wanted to be the first sound, but they came yeah. and saw us there. So they know how we are going to play. No matter what you want to take it. You know? Yeah. So yeah. That, that's how serious it was. But for the, for, during the clash, man, Squingy, Squingy had his A game going, man. He was determined that he was going to dismantle and, and attack body, bodyguard. And, um, wow. you know, he did it. But even even, even if, if, if anybody watches, watches the, 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 the video or the DVD or whatever um, of the clash, he would see Squingy stepping up into the link's face. You know what I mean? He wasn't back in none at all. You know? So yeah. that dance really stood out. And as a matter of fact, that dance was what I think launched to the world the, the chemistry with me and Squingy and also the, 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 the basis that Bass Odyssey was a new tune sound and we'll attack you with every single new tune and, you know, it, 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 it was intimidating to other sounds because I know that it drove a fear in sounds now. Yes. Y you know, li like, listen, honestly, every single, how does it feel to know that every single corner of this globe, when you talk about sound systems, no matter what, Bass Odyssey must be mentioned. It must. There's no going around that. Yep. Uh, That's, it, true. That's true. You know, so... Was there any selector that Squingy said, all right, he's going to give us some problems? Like, I know he had no fear, but this sound or selector that would you put and say, you know what, maybe, all right, we, we can, you know, maybe we can lose. This, these guys are really good. Is there any sound? Not really, you know, because what really happened, um, we grew fearless. And, and, and in the sense that the reason why we grew fearless is because Squingy is a man where, as I said, he was just naturally talented. So he will prepare himself just by being by himself and doing his, playing him video game and doing him thing. But he's preparing himself. He knew that in terms of preparation, when it comes to a clash, he not have to worry himself because I am going to deal with that part. I'm going to sit down. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm. It's, it's like you see what, what what a man must understand. You know, clash is like going to to college and 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 you're getting an exam. You know, the exam is the clash. Yeah. So you have to study. You have to study and 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 devise a strategy how you're going to approach a clash. You know, and based off a of homework that you you have done. So you know, we he knew that I would do all of that, get prepared, deal with everything, get everything prepared, do the work. And come in. So what he would do is that whenever he sees me finishing, finish all of the studio work, you know, the first question he's gonna say to me, Mark, everything all right? I'm gonna say yeah. And once me say yeah, he's not care about nothing, man. He knows everything good. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe 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 if anytime, maybe if anytime he asks me that question, and I would say no, sir, not no, right. He probably will say, yo, we're not going to that clash. You know? <laughs> but. He knew that we would do the work and, and, and put in the work to get things done. Because we always prepared for a right. clash. We never underestimated a clash. We took every clash serious. All right. So you said the first dance was New Jersey. You said there was two dances that really brought you to, uh, you know, about the whole thing. Yeah. What was the yeah. second yeah. dance? The second dance would have been the final dance that me and him um, played in a clash. And that was UK Cup 2008. Because remember, you know, he, he fell off at, the, um, at World Clash, at the, at, the, at the scaffolding at World Clash in 2007. And after that, he wasn't really well. He was really sick. You understand? And he came to UK Cup, even though not being 100%, and put on a performance of a lifetime. It's like... It's, it, 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 I probably would have said it's like he knew that that would have been his last clash. So he just, he just made, made sure to put on a performance that even to this day, people have to talk about it. You know what I mean? And, and, and to know that he wasn't himself, so to speak. Yeah. You know, he really, he, he really showed his class, you know, in that clash.
Wow. <clears throat> you know, I I'm going to bring you to 2002 World Clash. Where was it? 2002, you lost to Rebel Tour? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 2002, New York, yeah. Yeah. What was the feeling after that? After that, knowing that I think you won round to round, but you just One lost. Girl. Every single round. Every single yeah, well, round. To be honest, to be honest, um, the thing with the thing with both me and Squingy, as much as we 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 clash with a passion, we never really get downhearted after losing. You know what I mean? Because it's like how we normally do it is. If we lose a clash, you know, we normally say, well, all right, make sure, that whichever sound beat us, we say, make sure you don't take back a date with us. Because this is where you're going to see the real wicked side. You understand? <laughs> so we never really, you know, get downhearted after losing a clash. We just know, it's all right, that was one of them things. Eh? You can't win everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you think about it, we won World Clash in Jamaica 2001. Then we came to New York and won it in New York. You know, sometimes stigma in the dance hall. Newbie being young on the scene, playing CDs, not in the caliber to Bass Odyssey. It's like that worked for him because the crowd would say, yo, Bass Odyssey losing this clash, now go, now go do them nothing at all. Make we get the youth a try. You understand? So, you know, he played good because he, 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 he basically stood there amongst bigger sounds than him. And, you know, prevailed in the end and we you know hats off to him for that because you know it, it's not that easy thing you have to really be a fighter to do that yeah yeah you know what I mean? yeah man <laughs> but you know, it, it never affect us like that because you, as you see we 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 we, we carried on the same way and 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 kept doing our thing right y you know mark for for all the younger selectors listening who admire base odyssey i think one of the best explanations you could be is that how you accept uh, how you accept a loss in a clash with style and grace. I don't think you guys took it as you know serious as people get aggressive to it now. Like no, when you clash, you see, you, see, you see the thing is you the, the, the reality in life. The reality in life is that you will never, you could be the greatest in the world, you will never win everything that you're going. You, never, you will never win every clash. Because some nights, as great as you are, you will have a bad night. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or some night, or some night you might just not be there and, 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 and not connecting with the crowd like how you would normally do. And if a selector on a sound system is that good, he will capitalize on that. So you can't, be, you can't bring or be down on yourself. You can't win 10 clashes and because you lose one, it's like, yo, the world come to an end. No, it's just, a, it's just move on and, 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 and refocus and go at it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and in the same time, and in the same time, don't carry no feelings because this is just an entertainment. At the end of the day, all selectors should be friends. You know, not all of them are, but all should be friends. You get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we are being paid to provide entertainment for the paying patrons who are coming to see us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how, how did the slang from way out in the country, how did that, who, who brought that essence that to you? Bone to that was just bone to kill yeah. I to, to, to be honest, I, I didn't voice that song, but I just know that that is just bone to kill He's He has his thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not. You don't have to go to Killer with certain things. Killer, Killer will just put his his spin to whatever you go to him with. You right. know what I mean? So Bounty started that. Would you consider Bounty base artists artists or Bojo or both or? Well, it would have been both. It would have been both, but it's just that um, you know, the reality is that. You know how this business is. You know, you, you will have an artist that's, that is out there that is, you know, the hot artist doing their thing and you and them link and 
you know, you're, you're, you're playing most of their dubs and everything. And for whatever reason, maybe, you know, things slow down to some effect. And then there's this other new artist that come on the scene that is, 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 is spitting fire. You know yeah. what I mean? And you get a link with him. So, you know, over the years, you, 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 you develop that relationship and, you know, the artist looks out for you just like how you, you decide, say, you know, you're, going, you're not going to enter a clash without playing anything from that artist. So it happens. And, it, you know, because it, it's a generation thing. You know what I mean? Eventually, it would have faded out that, you know, the next artist come on the scene and you, you move with it. Because that's just what, that's what sound systems do. We play the songs that are popular. We play the songs that are relevant. Yes, and so regardless of whichever artist is out there, you know, this, the, the, the sound or bass or this, it would go to get the songs that are relevant and are hot and everything. You know what I mean? But it's just that, it's just that with Bounty Killer, there was a, a, a relationship to the point where, you know, we decided that we would not be entering a clash without playing a, bount, a new Bounty Killer. You know what I mean? And that, that's, that's how come it became that um, thing. But, if, you know, it, it's, it's a case where, you know, Buju was always, because Buju is, 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 is Father Keith's favorite artist. Yes. You know what I mean? So, so that link that they had that from before, you know, would always be there just the same. So, Ma Mark, I'm going to tell you, one of my favorite ever dub plates in the world is the Buju. The Buju yeah. on the war rhythm. Yeah. That is, I, I, that's what I, I just love Bounty Killer, every bounty that you guys play, but that Buju that says this yeah, is that the Buju, that, that Buju. That Buju became a modern day anthem. And the thing is, all credit is due to Charlie Black because he wrote that song. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and he came to me with the lyrics and said, all right, Mark, I'm going to write this, you know, you know without, without why I check Buju and things. Because, you know, I was the one that's cutting the dub. So that's the same time now I, I decided to, 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 to use back the war, use the war rhythm. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. the funny thing about that song, you know, is that when I went to the studio to voice Buju, and I brought the paper to him. It's like, would you say, you, what kind of lyrics is he? Okay, I can't give me. Me not, me, not, me not take lyrics for nobody. Me, me DJ my lyrics. I mean, I said, would you, yeah, man. But, you know, me, 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 me look at it and see what I go on, you know? And yeah. he took the paper. And it's like he said, which rhythm? And um, the, 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 the engineer started to play the rhythm. And I saw he was just like reading the paper and, you know, sh you know bouncing his head. And, and then he just said, all right, ready. And he went around into the voicing room and he started doing the song non-stop. He didn't, I mean, the, everything that he DJ was on the paper and it yeah. just flowed like it's something that he wrote. And a lot of people don't know this, is that if that song is to be played all the way to the end, right? In the last part of the song, yes. he started to freelance his lyrics because the song was about country. Right? And after he finished all the lyrics on the paper, he, he started to say, um, that part was for them, now this part of it, we, we left the country and we touched the city. We drive up on the place where them call the ferry. You understand? And he, he started to do uh, all kind of things to do with Kingston. You know what I mean? You, 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 you want a record for buy, you go a halfway tree, whatever the case may be. And the only reason why it stopped is because it really ran out. Oh, <laughs> history, history! Yeah. My gosh, yeah. man, you you've set yeah. so many standards across, and and Squingy has become in the argument of you know the greatest ever. He's in that argument as the greatest ever, Squingy. Yep. You know yep. how as a as a sound that we always say from way out in the country, you know, how mm. was that, was that effective uh, ammunition whenever you went anywhere? Because, you know, they, they, we didn't think of countries having great sounds. Is that what the problem was? Like, I thought all sounds across Jamaica were amazing. Country or town, they were amazing. What really happened, you know, what really happened, and if you realize, um, he, he always explained it, is that, People 
back in the days, like everybody that leave Jamaica to go anywhere in the U States, whether the States or anywhere in the world, right? As a Jamaican, they all, even when they come from in the country, they say, if a person asks them where they come from, they say Kingston. Kingston. Because true Kingston was the capital, Kingston was a bad man place. It's like, you know, if, if, if you basically say you come from Kingston, it's like, yo, it better be easy, you know, because tone man, that's, you know, ray, 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 ray. You understand? So everybody used to deny the fact that they come from country, right? So Squingy and, and, and even the other selectors and basically, see, you know, started to, to make it clear that this is a country sound. This is a country sound. Yes, and a country we live as well. We must say we in the bush. You get what I'm saying? And what that caused, I think that is what has cemented basically as a sound system that probably have the most fans in the world. Reason being that it made the people from country who are living in, in all over the world accept the fact that they are a country boy. Yeah. You understand? And they have this one sound system that is rep representing them and defending them as a countryman. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So everybody yeah. now started to, to, to say country, country, everything is country because at first, them look one countryman as some little bushman and, you know, <laughs> you don't have no sense or whatever, whatever, whatever. You get what I say? But yeah. because of how we approached it and, and embraced the fact that we, are, we come from the country and in a bush, the people that actually come from in the bush who were saying that they come from Kingston, Start accept, say, all right, yeah, man, I wish we come from real, man. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Did, that's, did, that's, that's you, thing. you feel like, did the town sounds, did you have to earn their respect, beat them in clash to go into town, or it just felt like, boy, you know? It, 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 they have that? to. What, what happened, what happened is that the Kingston sounds, always consider themselves superior to every other sound in Jamaica. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like once you leave out of Kingston, remember at one stage they used to call Portmore country? Because <laughs> once you leave out of Kingston, it's like you're going to country. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, so, right. so, so the Kingston sound felt superior to the country sounds then, right? And yeah. in order to, 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 to change that stigma, from from out of their or, or get that stigma out of their mind, the country sounder used to start beat this whole sounder, the Kingston sounder. So to show you, say, listen, it don't make a difference whether you come from Kingston or where, whether you come from bad sound or bad sound wherever we go in the world, wherever we come from, we are bad sound. So it don't make you, you can't come and feel say you're superior to we because you come from Kingston. That don't make no difference. Back in the days. We used to go to Kingston and bust up a town dance and make the people them do things that the Kingston selector never knew said the people them would have done. And when the Kingston selector them come to the to, to country, it's like they were struggling to play a dance. Wow. So that's what starts to show everybody say, yo, don't ramp with them country youth because them youth are really are the misses serious. Them now deal with it like, yeah, we come from here, so you better respect me. No, we come and prove, say we're bad. Yeah, it, Chiano, you know, th there's there's been there's been so much historic base odyssey dances, so much historic base odyssey clashes. But why the? Of course, the bodyguard. It it seems like bodyguard was always, if not, you know, battling back and forth, a thorn in base odyssey side. You know, with, with yeah, well, the thing. Is, the thing is with Bodyguard, and, and, and you have to give credit where credit is due, Bodyguard yes. was the first real recognized country sound. Yes. You understand? Yes. You, understand? You, you, had an ex, you had an ex country sound from St. Anne by the name of Turbocharge, which was a small sound in comparison to other than big sounds at town. But they had a select on it that was fearless. So he would go anywhere and clash any one of the big sounds there. Right? But bodyguard yeah. took it to another level. <laughs> you understand? A country yeah. bodyguard would have been recognized as the first real country sound that didn't fear no town sound and was always defending country. You know what I mean? Them never go like them a town sound or nothing of the sort. 
You know what I mean? They were defending country. So you find that when it when it reached a stage where, you know, base of the sea and bodyguard had to meet up and it would it would have been the battle of the countries to see which and I bad a country sound. You know what I mean? So, yes. you know, they had their nights and we had their nights. It's just it's just one of them things about it's just that we basically prevail longer. You understand? And started and started dominating more. Okay. To take over the rings as the top country zone. You, you know, Mark, how did how did you feel after a while? You kept winning and winning and winning. And then there were some world clashes that were going on. And after a while, Base Odyssey wasn't joining the world clash as dominant as they were or certain clashes as dominant as they were were you getting was it your fine saying boy i don't really want to be in a like you you pass this stage or there's nothing left for you to do nothing left for you to win was it financial i don't want to get into the personal personal business but i just want to know why there was you know a a, a disappointment they started to see stop um well if you think about it uh i have participated in world clash 2001 to we took a break from clashing from um between the end of 2002 to 2005 because what was happening is that stone love was regarded as the the, the juggling sound in jamaica it, the top juggling sound Yes. And we, you know, we, we we took a decision to say, listen, we need to build our fan base in juggling, so that because remember, said base of this was branded as a war zone, you know, you want a war zone, yeah, man, a base of this. So we said, all right, we want to build a fan base in juggling, you yeah, understand? Yes. So that we can, it's like it's like we would have been saying, can we have a fist all of that class juggling zone? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so 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 we took a break <laughs> from flashing. And just were just concentrating on juggling dances for the whole of 2003, the whole of 2004. And then we started back clashing in 2005. That was the world clash in Montego Bay that we won in three rounds. Is the, is the earliest a world clash ever finished in the history of world clash? Because the, 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 the rule was who, whoever win the most rounds, and it was five rounds. And we won the first three rounds. 3.30 dance done. Everybody got at them yet. Yeah, <laughs> son. That they ended up had to change the rule the following year because they were say, oh, boy, all who say World Clash finished too early last year. So they changed the rule now from whoever win the most rounds. <laughs> okay. You see? So you know? that, that clears up that clears up the argument of you didn't want to deal with some people about anything. It's just that you took time off to secure yeah, a fan come, base. Yeah. yeah, to build the fan base. That is why that is why base Odyssey would have been now labeled as the sound of war and juggle. So whichever event you want, you can you can you can book the sound for it because you know not like, unlike some sounds where you can only war, but you don't you know make sense you book like a juggling dance because they don't know how to do it. Or some sounds where you can only juggle and care war. You know that break that we took established the juggling fan base. So now we could have dominated both markets. Okay, okay, so that that's great. Listen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down because I'm going to shut down and reload back up because what I want is your opinion of what happened at the Base Odyssey King of These Dance. I want to know what you heard, what would happen. That's what I want to know about. Is that Jagger Jabba? Living legend. Okay, Mark. All right, so, so honestly, we were discussing some things and I just want your honest opinion or what you heard, what happened, because it was such a turning point for, I think, for all of dancehall history. I think it was. Okay, yeah, man, for real. What was um, your interpretation? Uh, well, that particular dance, I, I, I wasn't on the sound, you know, so I, I can only talk of what I heard, which is not much okay. still. I just yes. I just knew that I just knew that um the, the, the that, that it was there was the imminent split brewing. You understand? And um because of that I think there was a a a a a, a decision or a miscommunication between, you know, both owners to say of you know, 
if they should have taken the dance. I don't think to Keith, Keith didn't, never wanted to take the dance, to take the dance because he knew that he would, at the time, he was the one that cut the dub. You understand? And he knew that he would have been on tour with Squingy. So no preparation would be able to be done for the dance. You understand? Okay. And so therefore he was, he was, he was saying, boy, you know, he, he's not into taking that dance, you know. And this is based off what I'm hearing. Yes. You know, so I can only repeat what I'm hearing. And, yes. um, you know, Bonnie decided that, you know, well, they're going to go ahead with the dance, you know. So that's basically what I know of it. Because I know Keith and Squingy was away at the time of the dance. Okay. All right. So after, after that dance became the very dramatic Splitsville, I would say. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, um, was, that, was the, that was the deciding factor of, of the split, so to speak. Right. And <clears throat> were, uh, were the selectors that went with Bunny, were, it was their choice to go with Bunny? Was there any group meeting? Was there anything that, you know, Squingy, Keith, Bunny, Lenny, Glamagee, they did they everybody sit down in one place and say, you know what, this is you take this, you go here, or was it just Mina come back? Like, it was an aggressive split. To, to be honest, I, I can't give details of that. Okay. Um, okay. I wasn't there. No you know, I mean, anything that I'm going to be saying would have been hearsay, and, you okay. know, hearsay don't really stick out in this kind of situation. No you know, no all, I can, all I can no say way. is that um, it, 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 it was apparent that, that, that Glamour G and Lenny, you know, they, they, they were playing dances that Bunny was dealing with and, you know, which didn't go down well with Keith, you know. Okay. So at the end of the day, it's like, you know, that's, that's what basically caused the whole breakup of the Glamour G and Lenny. Uh, for the sound and everything. Okay. To what I understand. No problem. I, say I was not there. No I don't want to quote that. Yeah. All right. No problem. We move on from there still. Um, you know, when there was an episode where Squingy went up to the box, went on the box and fell down, was that the Mobe? Yeah, it was, it was, it was actually on the scaffolding. Yeah, so it's World, World Clash 2007. Yes. And and what did, what were you think like what was the the immediate response and and how what was like? Well, the thing is, you know, it's just stubborn, squidgy, stubborn, because <laughs> we knew that he was a hundred percent. You know what I mean? And when he said when he when he when he walked over to the scaffold and he looked back at me and I, and I was shaking my head, I said, "No, no bother with that tonight." You know what I'm saying? And he just decided right. that he's going to do it. Yeah, son. But what actually happened? It's not like he he went up and he 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 he, he slipped or anything to fall. You know what had happened is that he went up and the scaffoldings. That's where the lightings for the whole you know place and everything is on, right? And apparently there was some raw wire that was there. So when he reached up to hold on to the other part of the scaffolding, the raw wire was there, and of course you know the scaffolding is alum aluminum. So when he yeah. reached up and hold on to the raw wire and it brought it down on the aluminum, it shocked him. So he let go. And he let go, he let go now. It, it was so, so drastic that the other hand could not hold his body weight. So that's how he fell off of the thing. Oh, history again. You see, we learned a real deal now. It wasn't a slip. It was yeah. a shock. Yeah, no, no, it's not a slip. It's not a slip. He actually let go because he got shocked. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. Listen, you know, can you take me? I, I, I want to go to a dance that you know, Bass Odyssey mm. lost. Mm. I know it's different because it's always about winning. But can you take me to a dance that you know, Bass Odyssey, we lost that dance? I want to dance we lose, man. Only. <laughs> but the funny, thing about, the funny thing about the dance is that we lost is that the, the, the problem that Base Odyssey had, right? Not yeah. really a problem, but the, 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 the thing with Base Odyssey is that because we were so dominant with new tunes, we yeah. were lacking with foundation tunes. And you know, most clashes those days, no matter what's going on, it's going to go to a, a tune for tune, right? 
So right. we would have led a lot of dances from start to finish. I mean, have the dance on fire from start to finish and then lose in the tune for tune. You understand? Oh, so we yeah. lost a couple of dances that way. But the difference with the whole thing is that our, our dominant performance was so, you know, so different. Oh, he froze up. Oh, he froze. Okay. No disrespect. I'm just going to try to boot him out to see. I'm just going to, I'm just going to boot it. I hope it, he restarts his and, and stuff like that. Wow. It, it, and this is, this, this is, I think this is amazing, man. I think this is so cool, you know, um, thing. <laughs> Mighty crowd. To, yo. Yeah, probably a call coming in. Um, I think this is so amazing. Big, big shout outs to Smash 49, who's always here. QMC, if you're here, right? DJ Banks. Um, so so that was we found out base Odyssey's weakness. The only weakness I think they probably had. Um, his tune for tune. Sample King is here. What am I doing now? What, what what am I doing now? Good vibes. Please, please tell me. I'll ask him. DJ Genius, how you, how you see? Worm was here? All right. Big shout outs to Worm. Um, I I think this is this is just Billy Billy is here. Nastra. Pick up yourself. All right, here's Mark. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So you're saying that basically it would you consider your weakness was only the tune for tune? Yeah, that was our weakness. That was our weakness. The tune for tunes. You know, son, because you know the the, the the difference the thing with bass Odyssey um in those clashes is that we we, we played our own so consistent and so dominant that it's like the, the crowd would always be, be, be patiently waiting. Even if the other sounds are not going with nothing, it's like the crowd is patiently waiting for bass Odyssey. Because they know so when we come back here, it's going to be fire again and all those things. But yeah. because those days, as I said, it wasn't the case where who dominated the dance or who won the most rounds. Most dances had, was, had a mandatory tune for tune. So that's where we would have lost most of our dances. Right. Well, okay. So, you know, for for a sound system of Bass Odyssey, you had so much sounds, selectors, mixers in a time. Can you tell me, I mean, I think Mark Squingy was the leads of it. Was, was there tiers or levels to of it? Not to bring down or disrespect anybody, but was there, you know, Keith would say, if there's this, this kind of dance, it has to be Mark. This kind of dance, maybe Glamour G or, or somebody, was, was there a difference of that or was it just, you know? Well, in, 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 my, in my time on the sound, um, it's, 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 it's only obvious you know, it's, it's, it's that once you have your two main selectors, if, if, a dance, if, if a dance comes up that is of utter importance, then you're going to want your two main selectors to be there. You understand? And you have times where, you know, everybody in the team knows that once it's a clash, so to speak, you know, it's going to be Mark and Squingy because, you know, you want your A team, so to speak. You know, not that we're having, you know, we, we, we're segregating anybody, but, you know, facts is facts in that we were the main two on the sound system. You understand? So for representing the brand, you would want your main two to be representing at all times. You have cases where... Even on regular juggling dances in Jamaica, you find that promoters will be requesting that me and Squingy be at the dance. And it, it, it couldn't happen because, you know, there were two sound systems. 
And the two sound, the two promoters, the two two promoters that have the dates want both me and Squinji. And it was impossible for the both of us to be at the two dances. So what had to happen most times in Jamaica, most cases, Squinji went to one of the dances and me, I went to one of the dances. Just to kind of alleviate that the fact that um the promoter would feel good to say, all right, at least we get one of the selectors, you know what I mean? Or one of the main persons. But the difference the difference with me and Squingy, though, is that we never took the glory for ourselves. You understand? And that is one of the things that has made base of this is strong over the years. We never took the glory for ourselves. We always intro introduced the, the other selectors that were on the top and put them in the prime spotlight. Therefore, you know, we play most dances, some dances we would just go and play early and let the other selectors play late. You know, because that would give people and the promoters confidence to say, well, if Mark and Squingy confident them you have to play, then, you know, if them come up with dance, everything all right. And that's what, that was one of the yeah. strong backbone for being sorry. Oh, Mark. Is he there? You're good? You can yeah. hear me, Mark? Yeah, man, I'm hearing you. Yeah, man. Okay, 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 okay. You know, there was an era, um, where, like, you know, Charlie Black was there on the sound. How how did that, you know, come about? Well, he wanted to work on the sound, and he approached, he approached Keith. He, I think he called him or something like that. And, you know, basically was looking to work on the sound. And in most cases, in those times, I was like the, 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 the recruiter. Yes, and so... Whenever there was somebody new coming on the sound, they had to go to dance with me. And if I pass them or, or give them, you know, give them a, a, a pass grade, then they're good to go. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> when he contacted Keith, you know, we were playing. <clears throat> the first night he played the sound was a dance in um, Hanover. Hanover. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly which part, but I remember, I remember that it was Hanover. And um, he went to the dance with me and, you know, he worked and did his thing and, you know, basically, we realized that we knew we knew him from Warlord days and everything that he could do his thing. You know what I mean? But not everybody can leave from a zone and go on the next zone and, and adjust properly, to, you know, to bring that level of standard that, that is expected. So he did good. So, you know, Mitel Keith said, yeah, man, he's bad, man. He can, he can do his thing. And that's how he came out on the zone. Okay, okay. You know, <clears throat> I remember... Um, playing and a dance alongside you nine miles i think bob marley's um i think there's there's something for bob marley yeah, like from it yeah yes and i saw i yo i mean when i played it was nice and vibes but to see the love that base odyssey you know that base odyssey had it was it's it's tremendous and i and i acknowledge that forever i take that because i i was there and i witnessed it and it's just you know did you think that base odyssey represented all country not just sentence not just you know that the entire co en entire country yeah, i represent kingston <laughs> but then probably don't like it but we represent our kingston yes <laughs> <laughs> But 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 we 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 were the country so, yeah, right? Because I mean, as I said, as 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 what Squinji would say is thirteen country I want to. So we had the thirteen yeah. country to represent. Yeah, you know I mean. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, just for clarification, I don't I don't want to get it. Just for clarification, um, there's a lot of people asking questions about you know was Lenny the lead MC or whatever. But I don't think you were positioned on the sound in that era of time no no i wasn't i wasn't i wasn't there when lenny was there yeah right. so um, so that's why i don't want to that's why i keep telling people we don't really ask about those questions because he wasn't there at the time so i just wanted oh, to no. clarify that i just wanted to yeah. clarify that for people right um so you know base odyssey is is, is a thing why did it's a moving force. You have Mark movements now. 
Are you not yeah. still in any association with Base Odyssey, although you have your own um, sound now? Unfortunately, no. Um, there, there has been what you could term as somewhat a bad vibes, you know, where I'm doing my thing, they're doing their thing, and, you know, it's like, you know, they're not playing with my sound, and, you know, basically that's, that's just it. We don't, we don't, we don't communicate you have you have one and two on the sound that you know will link me and out of respect and everything and you know we talk and everything because you know I mean I care feelings I mean I have no time for that you know I mean I'm focused okay. on, on on building my brand you understand I have some young talents around me that the brand that I'm building is not really for me you understand because I've been there done that all over the world I'm trying to get expose these talents so they can go and experience what I've experienced you know, try to achieve what I have achieved, so to speak. Right. <clears throat> Mark, do you ever think there would ever, ever be... I, I know it, it won't be the exact same, but do you ever see that there's anything that could be close to a Mark and Squingy again? <laughs> I don't know. I'm old. I'm always... I don't. I don't know if I'll be. I'll be paid so that long enough to, to, to get that. <laughs> to get that, that opportunity. No, no, you know but not mean? even you. But not you. Oh, you but like, maybe like, do you see anybody like, else? Anybody else? There could be like um, you and Squeezy. It's, it's possible. It's possible. There's a lot of there's a lot, there's a lot of good selectors out there and and MCs. You know what I mean? Is 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 once a person is determined to achieve and reach greatness, they can. You get what I'm saying? You, you, you just have to um, put in the work, you know, and be dedicated. The problem with, with, with a lot of young selectors that have the talent, that have the potential to reach to those levels is that they are, they're not really doing it for the love. They're doing it for the hype and the money. So because of that, you know, if they are, if, if they are on a sound and once something slows down and it don't look like it's going, they've gone to jump ship because, you know, this now, this now bring the popularity and the fame that what they want. You know what I mean? But you have to be able to stick with your sound too thick and thin. You understand? And eventually, you'll reach where you want to reach. Right. Shano. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it, it's, it's like I, I've played alongside um, yourself. Like, I was very close i was real close with glamour g at first right but i've known you for a while you know right. um and right. it's it's just to to, to see um his, his sound is called um mark movements correct that's what your sound is called yeah yeah so for those who just come in we've discussed the fire links dance already that you keep asking me we have discussed that already so there it is mark movements that's it right there <clears throat> All right. We've discussed that fire mix movement. Um, there, there's been so much dances at Cave Valley. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm asking, trying to ask him about some, some things. Like I said, Mark Trent, Snapchat. We discussed the base Odyssey fire links dance already. <laughs> We've discussed that. You should have jumped on the live right away. You got to be on the live right away. Um, you know, you see the new, and now you're not really in conjunction with Base Odyssey because you say there's bad vibes. Is that with you and Keith or you and the selectors? Um, everybody, basically. Oh. It's like we just don't link. We just don't link. It's not a case where, it's not a case where um, it's, a, it's a bad vibe to the point where, you know, if, if we see each other, it's like screw face and all them something. No, we just, we just... You know, I do my thing, they do their thing. You know, we, we, we pass each other. We just go, go about our business and don't see each other, basically. You know what I mean? It's, okay, it's sad, okay. too. It's a sad reality that it's, it's that, that point. But, you know what I mean? Life goes on. Yeah. Listen, Mark, I, I, I've taken up your time in the night. Uh, I, I, I appreciate everything that, you you know, you've done. Um you know, <clears throat> a lot of people want to hear about certain different little dances, but I, I'm, I'm telling them I've already discussed with you how what we're going to talk about and what we've done, and we've done that. We've, we've accomplished that. Um, 
Uh, I, one question. You're st you're cut. Of course, Mark Movements is cutting dubs for your sound and and you're building your team, correct? Full of dub, man. Full of dub. <laughs> <laughs> I know me. I go bring my little creativity to my dubs and everything, guys. You know, if if it's one thing I know, I have a standard with cutting dubs from even bass artists. Everybody, you know, you you see the songs that bass artists have. Yes, and we always bring our right. level of creativity to it. So, um, you know, that's the same thing I'm doing with my own right now. You know, but as I say, I'm doing it to, to try to get you know, my young selectors out there, you know, so that they will have their five minutes of fame, so to speak. Yeah. You know, so when you have DJ Mark movements, do you want to have more of it going as a, a clash sound or is it going to be a juggling sound? My song? No, Mark Movements. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, well, it's me. I started out, I started out juggling because, you know, in this, in this, in Jamaica especially, you have very few clash dances nowadays. That's why it's more parties and juggling. You know what I mean? So we, 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 we started off with the juggling vibe because we wanted to build that juggling fan base. So eventually when I decide to clash, at least I'll have a fan base that knows about the sound, know how we play to have us, to have them supporting us in a clash. You understand? Eventually it's yeah. going to go to that. You know, I mean, no, I take for clashing up. So I am not going to just be quick, even though I have a lot of dubs. I'm not going to be just quick to run into a clash because I'm not going into a clash to lose. You understand? So I'm, I'm going to be making sure that I am fully prepared to how I know I need to be prepared in order to go into a clash. Which is almost there, almost. When I say almost, very much almost there. <laughs> very much almost there. What do you, what What do you think of the Clash world now? What do you think of the whole, you know, the mighty crowns and the sentinels and the dynamics and and those things? What do you think of the world of Clash? How it is now? Because of course it's been totally different than when you were doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. The Clash, the Clash vibes has slowed down a lot in terms of um in terms of crowd you know attending clashes you know what i mean and I, I i think the whole entertainment level has dropped you know from our era of clashing so to speak and i mean with, with, with our era of clashing you find where there's vibes right through yeah you might have one or two songs where you know really a keep up keep up on the standard of, of us but there was a constant vibe. There was something that the people can look forward to. You know what I mean? Nowadays, clashes, I'm, I'm seeing clashes and it's like, I'm almost sleeping watching the clashes. You get what I'm saying? Because I don't know if they, they're, they're not putting in that work, that, that interesting factor. Don't get me wrong, you know, there are, there are a lot of clashes that are kept that are bad. You know what I mean? But majority of them is like, they're lacking some form of the entertainment part of it. And I think it's because a lot of the sounds and the selectors especially take, take it too serious. So they, they, they forget about that they're actually entertaining a crowd. You know what I mean? They start taking it personal and tell them one another about them one another and, and probably carry feelings from long time and all them things. They, them things they don't work in a clash. You get what I'm saying? It's a part of entertainment. You need to, even though you're competing, you're still being paid to entertain. Wow. Wow. So you almost ready to, you think you're what, six months, six weeks to take on the um, big leagues of, of this whole industry? Yeah, well, we're looking at next year because no matter what, this COVID-19 has shut down everything. So it's, it's still not going to be before yes. next year. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, I mean, yes, I understand, I understand. But, um... <laughs> You, you know, you know, Mark. When I when I talk to a lot of selectors, especially the the giants, the giants of them, and I'm going to ask you about one or or, or a few more questions and call it a night because um, I appreciate. I don't want to take advantage of your time. Um, <clears throat> Clash seems to be a dangerous issue back then that we in the other world didn't know. <clears throat> Like, it was, like, very dangerous because even Lynx told us about a time was, I guess, I'm wondering if that was the Cave Valley dance where 
you know, he had to run, leave the sound. You see <laughs> yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I was okay, Valida. Yeah. Were you there? Were you there? Yeah, yeah. Can you give us your rendition like, of, of what happened? Of what you could recollect All right. happened? All right, what happened with that dance? That dance was a very hype dance. Yeah, we were just coming off a world class victory and you know, Lynx was doing him thing and you know, so it was it was a very hyped dance. Um the thing is Lynx, as far as I can remember, um when we reached the dance, Lynx was they told someone told us that Lynx came a long time and was in his car sitting down. You know? So when me and me and Squinji reached the dance, you know, we we we, we, we you know, basically, he Squingy addressed the crowd and everything, and and you know, me and Squingy, me and Skinny, was you know playing some early songs and and, and thing. I think even Damien, I think Damien was there with Skinny playing early. You understand? And then you no, know, eventually when Lynx came in, you know, the clash started. But I think Lynx came into the dance late, and I think the reason why he did is because. You know, regardless of the fact that Lynx is a, is, a, is, a, is a giant in the business and everything, he knew that he did not have the dub plate capacity or quantity to match up with Bass Odyssey. So I think he was basically buying time before the clash, to start the clash. Because the later the clash started, he would have had more dubs to play. So anyway, oh. you know, he, 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 the both sounds were playing and of course, Kival is our tone. So, you know, we're going to have the fans, no matter how you want to take it. That's just a home to our advantage, right? And Lynx was there playing, but he wasn't going on with anything, you know? And it reached a stage where we played around and destroyed him, you know what I mean? And he came back in and was struggling. So when he finished playing the round and Squingy, we basically said, yo, we have a lucky mark. While Squingy was talking, um, Lynx started to talk. While Squinji was talking, and, and Squinji said, Yo, my youth, you know, see, you, you, you know, just don't play. I put it type of play. Just pull on the mic and shut up, man. And he continued talking and, and pressing his lick shot and all them something there. And Squinji said, Promoter, come and tell him, say, we just lock up him so we could play. And, 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 and Squinji basically was, you know, getting upset, so to speak. Right? And um, Link still continued to talk. So, so Squingy said, all right, here are links. Or, you know, I think he said to the promoter, I said, promoter, you see any old links I lock off him sound? I'm going to put on the mic, put on the mic, I'm going to walk out of the dance. And everybody in the dance, I'm going to walk out. And links still continue. I think the promoter came to links and links didn't continue to do what he was doing. You understand? By disturbing our round. And um, Squingy just said, all right, people, time for go, you know. And he just put on the mic and walked out. And the whole entire dance walked out behind him. Right? Now, there were a few patrons in the dance who, who, was, um, who was upset because of the fact that Lynx didn't allow Bass Odyssey to play. You know what I'm saying? And they were basically getting angry, so to speak. And Lynx started talking. I said, oh, I run Bass Odyssey after you run. Ray, 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 Ray. And somebody in the crowd threw a bottle in the direction of Lynx. Right? And when, 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 when Lynx, when the bottle went across one of his, whoever came with him i guess was behind the sound but connected in his face or something like that and um links links said i want to do i want to get the guns links to the money yeah links so so, so it's like, yeah when he said that it's like you know of course people are run up and down and he, he he was he was he was moving like he went to, i think he went to one of the, the maintenance crew and, and hold on to the maintenance crew and like he had his hand in his waist like he had a gun. We should do him about a gun. Yeah, sir. But no, he was we, pretending. We, 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 yeah. Right? And, and the maintenance crew, I think the maintenance crew, because I, I, I was seeing all of this, the maintenance crew boxed him on his hand and realized that he had nothing there. And the maintenance crew started to draw one machete from behind his, out of his waist, which <laughs> is yeah, a good thing. So the machete you know, links, did did not, links did not lie. Yeah. Right? So 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 when when that happened and Lynx realized now so yo, you know, he's he's one man against a lot of people now. He ran out of the dance. And in running out of the dance, the yeah. the, 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 the gateway of the dance, Reynard Fall earlier the evening, 
the gateway of the dance, they had a board across the gateway. And he didn't see the board, and he, he, he bucked his foot on the board and dropped on his belly and slide a good little distance in the mud. You know what I mean? Because the momentum carried him, pitched him that way, and he got up and he ran. Because we didn't even see when he was running. In. And the funny thing about it, you know, there, there were some people that came. There were some people that came, got, came over the sound with a, like a two before board to try to mash up his thing, you know. And it was me and Keith that went around his sound and stood up and said, yo, no can not mash up the man's sound. You understand? Because they wanted to mash up the sound because you mash up the dance and whatever, whatever. And we said, no, we no can not do that at all because we don't want it to look like we were instigating a war to you know, mash up him things. You get what I mean? I said. So yeah. Yeah. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And him leave the dance. We didn't even know what time he come back. Because by the time he come back, me ask him to do that. I will me that. You know? Yeah. But yeah. The no. people were so Links upset. never lied. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you shouldn't have a reason to lie because it's not like no. it never happened like that. No, he, he said it. He, links, links didn't lie. Links didn't hold back nothing. But it's just great to hear the two sides of the stories from two great <laughs> icons. Listen, my final question, because everybody wants me to keep everybody on the live like the man them don't want to relax at them thing. There, but I don't want to do that, OD. I don't want to OD my I time. I, I remember I said, I remember I said, me and the MC, so me are good at the talking, <laughs> talking, talking. <laughs> Yo, so what I'm going to do is just ask you, in your opinion, right? Mm -hmm. In your opinion, who do you think the top five selectors in your opinion, are across the globe uh, yeah. or the you top to, five that you face? You you have to um determine because you remember you have selectors and you have MC, so you have to determine that part because selectors okay. are different from MC. Yeah, Can we I mean. say five MCs? Five MCs then? Yeah. Well, definitely, you know, number one is going to be Squinji. You know, if not, but you know what I mean. Um, he has proven yes. all all of his career, you know, that he is the dominant one. Of course, it's going to be the, 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 the five that is yeah. that, that, is, that is known to everybody. You have Mataran, you have Lynx, you have Trooper, and you have five, and um, Panther. So it, 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 that's basically it's, it, it's where it is. Those MCs were responsible for taking the sound class business. From, from selectors, from M's, from DJs standing around sounds and DJing to actually entertaining the MCs, entertaining the clash. It's like they replaced the DJs that used to go on sounds, the DJ and clash and all them something. You understand? Those MCs were responsible yeah. for taking it to a different level in the sound clash business. And you have to give respect to them, no matter what. Yes, yes. Mark, listen, no matter what, and I know those five are are absolutely of great, great character. To me, all, all selectors are, are great characters, but you as well as one of the mixers, you are absolutely one of the greatest that I've personally seen, that I personally know. Um, and I just want to say maximum respect to you for everything that you've done, how you've taken a sound from the country and brought it to the whole world so that we can all love and we can all appreciate. And your dominance with you and Squingy and the rest of the team, absolutely fabulous. Um, you know, people don't understand that I've been talking to you for almost two hours and that that's a long <laughs> time for Mark to talk. And I don't want to violate... Yeah. Our friendship by overstepping my boundaries and stuff. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much for what you've done in the business. And I appreciate you and I respect you to, to what you've yeah, done. You and it's, it's an honor for me to, to talk to you. It's an honor for me to talk to you. So thank you, Mark. Yeah, man, no Anything problem. you want to say, anybody you want to big up Mark Movement? Yeah, well, yeah, well, um, I don't huh? know about the fans too, man, because the fans that are there from base Odyssey is still is still a part of my fan base. You know what I mean? It's like 
you know, we, we, we grew up over the years, you know, about almost 16 years being on the zone, you know, and big respect to them because they have given me the credit, you know, for, you know, a lot of the work that I've done, you know, I mean, they have shown the appreciation and also that um, I'm a humble person. I have never been a person who, you know, is, is, is running down fame or, or recognition or anything like that. So when, when I get... Um, credited for certain things, you know what I mean? I'm humbled about the whole situation and everything. But big up to everybody, you know, just look out for my movements coming, some new, some new selectors, bad selectors, know how to keep up the standard and everything coming out there. So just look out for them and, you know, we'll be seeing each other sometime in the future. Yeah, man. See, Mark, right thank there. you very um, much. Big up, big up, big up, big up. My brother, Richie, King Kleptos out. Virgin. Yeah. Yes. Keep yes. it real. Go ahead. Yo, <laughs> Richard. He's he, he's like you. He's one of those secret weapons, you know. He's like you. He's one of those secret <laughs> weapons that doesn't take the forefront. He doesn't take the forefront, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, just yeah. like you. But Mark, thank you very much for this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Respect. This was a very great interview by DJ Wiz, as usual. And Mark clear up some things we Glamour G them talk about and some things we Lenny talk about in terms of Glamour G, I said with the sound and farm and all that. And Mark make it clear where him and um, Keith did meet up and thing when Keith had farmed the sound. Mark make it clear say, I him first played the sound and Mark talk extensively about a lot of things and based Odyssey. He even spoke about the 1996, 1995 clash over Portmore with Base Odyssey and um King Addis. Which in him didn't go into too much because him said it's based on what he heard as he was talking about the sound at an imminent split at the time. Bless up to DJ Wiz. No prof to DJ Wiz as usual. My hat off to DJ Wiz as usual. Viewers and subscribers, tell me what you think about the interview so we can talk about it. We've come to the end of another video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so as yet. Also, please turn on your post notification bell so whenever I make a new upload, you can be the first to be notified. Peace out, bless up, and definitely catch you in the next one.